So first of all, I want to welcome everybody, and I'm really glad you chose to come here. I think uh, my name is Steve Shapiro, and I'm the coordinator of experiential learning for Bexley City Schools. And this is part of a series called Community Conversations, where we're, we have really amazing teachers in Bexley. We know that, and we get to learn from our teachers. But we also have some really amazing community members in Bexley. And uh, we're inviting some of those community members to share their knowledge and their expertise with us uh, in a variety of different ways. And today we have a really great uh, a really great guest. We have Kristen O'Riordan, and Kristen is, um, uh, she's a parent of two Bexley kids, including a Cassingham student, but in addition to that, she's also a teacher in Hilliard City Schools, and one of the things that I love about her work is that she's actually teaching about happiness, and we all want to be happy. We all know that the ultimate goal for all the things we chase is that we should, you know, be happy and enjoy our lives, but we don't really always know how to do that. Uh, we mostly just react to the things that are in front of us. And one of the things that was really interesting is about 20 years ago, in 1998, the field of positive psychology emerged, which, you know, psychologists, psychology used to be about like what's wrong with you, what's broken, what doesn't work, our anxiety, our depression, our, our neuroses and all these things. And then some psychologists thought, why don't we try to see what's right with us? How do we figure out how to just, you know, what's the science of happiness? And um, so today uh, we're going to learn about that, about how to be more happy. And I think hopefully what you're going to learn today will not only be interesting while you're doing it, but will hopefully give you tools and strategies that can help you continue a journey that will lead you to a happier life. So welcome. Thank you so much for, uh, for being with us today. Yes, no, that's, that's an awesome way to start it. Um, one thing too, I know like being a, a teacher, but not a teacher in your district, I know I'm a new face. So just know right off the bat that like, I'm very like relaxed in everything that I do. I want this to be as inner, you know, like let's interact as much as possible. So if you have a question, um, if you have just like a perspective or an experience or anything else that you want to jump in at any point, please know I'm not somebody who typically like stands up and like gives lectures like it's very much a hands-on experience kind of thing um so i just want to start that off by by saying that but thank you guys for coming i, I know um there's a lot going on like this is this is it's helpful for any time of your life but um especially now with just so much information and so much that's out of our control i think it's particularly helpful to have these actual strategies that we can use to make us feel better so i'm just going to go through today and um I'll give you a little bit of information to back up kind of, I'm a person who likes to know the whys behind things. So I'll give you like a snapshot of the whys, but just know we could go really deep into that stuff. But today I really wanna focus more on the practice part of things. So what can you actually do at home both during this time when you are at home, obviously a lot, um, and you might have a lot of thoughts going through your head, but this is a practice that can be lifelong. So even when things are, are different and i don't want to even say normal anymore because we have no idea what that's going to be um but when things kind of are are more normal for us these are practices that are everyday um things that we have again been proven to make us happier people so i'm going to use the word practice a lot throughout each of these and the reason that that's really important to kind of just acknowledge at the very beginning is it is just like when you think about like if you play an instrument or you play a sport you're not going to be good in the game or you're not going to be good in the performance if you haven't done the practice for it so it's not going to be one of those things where like oh i did that that one time it didn't help so i'm not going to do it anymore i didn't like see the immediate results from it this is an ongoing lifelong practice and just knowing the information is not enough um, I know the information, but that does not make me the happiest person in the world, right? Like I have to practice it right along with everybody else. So some of the strategies I'm going to introduce to you today um, are going to be things where like in that moment, you might have that immediate like, yes, that really made me feel better. And others are more like you have to create the habit. Um, and there's different ways that you can create that habit. So I'll kind of, as we go through things, just kind of give some some tips for that kind of thing too um, as we go. So uh, you'll hear that again a lot. I think one of the other important things just to get started with as well is, yeah, I teach um, a happiness course, but I don't want that to be misinterpreted um, that like everybody's saying that you have to be happy 100% of the time, because that's not realistic. Um, all of your emotions are okay, and it is absolutely okay to not be okay, especially when you feel like there is a lot of out of your control. So this is to help you in those moments when you're not okay, but then to also maintain the good when it is good. So um, just kind of putting that out there at the beginning as well. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you. I'm a visual person. So like I like to be able to look at things. The other reason I want to be able to share my screen with you guys is there might be some um, 
things I go over where I don't expect you to like jot down everything. If you want to like pick up your phone and take a picture, like for example, I'm going to recommend some apps and things like that that are awesome to have on your phone or an iPad. Feel free to take a picture of it, no problem whatsoever. So I wanted to be able to just kind of be able to show you guys that and give me just a second here as I get into mode here. Cool. Now the one thing I will say just like the technology piece of things, is now that I'm sharing my screen, I can't see you guys all at the same time. So if you do have a question, like in that moment, please just unmute yourself and speak up so that I know that you have that question just because I'm not going to see you if you're just like sitting there raising, like waving at me. I, I can't see everybody at the same time. Um, all right. So just kind of getting started too. And again, I teach um, in Hilliard. I teach at the Innovative Learning Center um, in Hilliard. So um, I've been there now for six years, actually. Um, and this is the first year of teaching this program. We were in a spot where we started recognizing at the post-secondary level how that, that science part um, has just really gotten really huge. And there's such this need at like um, Yale and Harvard are two of the top universities that have these programs. And it's, it's been huge. So we wanted to figure out how do we teach this to students at a younger age, they can practice it longer in their life and actually benefit from it throughout middle school and high school, and then whatever they choose to do beyond high school. So, um, so that's that. So one thing I want us to start with is two minutes of calm. And this is something that I actually do every day with my students um, at the very start of our class. And the first time we did it, which is obviously gonna be like the first time right here, right now, it can be a little uncomfortable for you. Two minutes can feel really long when we're literally not doing anything. And I'm gonna set my timer, because I'm somebody who like, I'll just start talking again. So <laughs> I'm gonna set the timer so we actually have the two minutes. Um, you can kind of see here too, you, if you're somebody who feels like you need to be doing something in those two minutes, you can just look at some of the whys, really basic whys as to why this two minutes of calm can be so incredibly beneficial for us. Um, what I'm gonna ask before I start the timer though, is with these two minutes, do your best to do a couple of things. One, try not to be distracted by anything else going on around you. Try not to pick up your phone or anything else. Try your best to see what is happening in your head in this two minutes time. Are your thoughts going all over the place? Are you able to kind of just stop and breathe and not think about anything? If you're not able to do that, by the way, don't like be gentle with yourself to try to kind of reel it back in and be present in the moment. But this is one of those practices. It can be really hard to keep your brain in the moment, even when it's only two minutes of your day. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the timer now and do your best again, just to see what is going on in your head and kind of do like a little pre-assessment for yourself. All right, so I'm starting the timer now.
All right. So that was two minutes, right? For some people that might've felt like an eternity. Other people, it goes by really, really quickly. And I just want you to take that quick second here now that we've done that and think to yourself, like how many thoughts were going through my head? Was I able to be here? Or was I thinking about everything else that I'm doing right after this? Am I thinking about what I have to do the rest of the day? Um, what we're eating for dinner? Or I wish I could be outside. I wish it wasn't raining. Like where did your thoughts go? And there's no like right and wrong with this by any stretch. It's for you to start acknowledging how comfortable you are with silence and with calm. Because mindset is such a big piece of this. And I think sometimes we get so uncomfortable and we feel so on the go that we don't allow ourselves to have that calm to just be okay with nothing happening. And it can have major, major benefits to you. As you can see here, like everything from reducing stress to helping you focus, to decreasing your anxiety and depression rates, um, to increasing your awareness and knowing what's going on around you. And I mean, you can see the whole list here, there's the physical impact as well. So if we can get more comfortable with that, it allows your brain to be more open to everything else going on as well. Okay, I'm gonna do one more kind of just getting us started mindset piece. And we don't have to take necessarily a full minute, but what I want you to do is in your own space, obviously this is gonna be different for everybody since we're all in our own rooms, but I want you to take like 30 seconds to just look around your room, the space that you're in and count and see how many things are in your space that are the color blue. And that's it, just count and see how many you have. You'll see heads turning, so I'll give you another couple seconds here. All right. Now, throwing it at you, what now if I, instead of asking, okay, how many did you guys come up with? Instead, my question for you is how many red things were there in the room? Can you answer that? Probably not, right? Because the whole idea is I just asked you to look for blue things. And, and so that's what you're concentrating on. That's where your brain was. That's where your focus and your attention was. So if you're like, how many red things are there? I don't know, you asked me to count blue. You weren't paying attention to that because that's where your brain was. That's where your focus was. And so the idea with this idea of like the science behind happiness is that our brains are actually like literally like made to scan for threats. That's the easiest thing our brain does. So in this example, your brain was being trained to scan for the blue, right? So what we need to do is actively practice and train our brains to do the harder thing. And in, in the bigger picture, it's to look for the positives, right? Like when there's so much going on around us that might be uncontrollable and negative, that's where our brain is gonna immediately go. We need to consciously and very actively practice these things so that we can start scanning more for the positives and look for those positives in this example, again, the reds, right? So you would be able to then look around and be like, oh, well, yeah, I counted 25 blue things, but off the top of my head, I also saw probably about 12 red things because I was able to scan for those things as well. Um, so that goes back to that word practice again. And it is just so important that we do that because our brains aren't wired to do it. It's so much easier to get caught in the negative. I mean, you guys know, even when you're interacting with people, if you might be having a really good day, um, and like students, you're having a great day. And then all of a sudden you go to lunch and you have that like one friend who like, is just like, oh my gosh, all of this stuff happened to me. Listen to how horrible my morning was. And then like the rest of your day is now on that track instead of like the goodness that was happening for you earlier in the day. So we have to figure out like, all right, how do we switch back? Cause it's easy to have that negative. So we need to think about how do we switch our brains? And what's really cool if you, well, I guess cool in a relative sense, depending on what you think is cool. I think it's really cool is that we can actually like 
change the grooves in our brain so that if you do these practices that I'm going to introduce to you, the grooves that focus on the positive actually get deeper and deeper and deeper until that becomes like that main focus of your neuropathways versus the ones that are already there to be wired for the negative. So I think that's pretty cool that we have that power to do that in our own brains. One of the biggest things that you can do to help you with this, and this is that app page that I was kind of referencing before. So again, feel free if you want to like either jot these down or, or take a picture of them. These are some of my favorite apps. Um, meditation is one of the biggest um, practices that you can do to help you with your mindset piece and um, the focus, not just in the time when you're doing the uh, meditation, because I think that's what a lot of people think it's like just during that practice itself. The meditation itself actually helps you so that in those everyday life situations, when you are dealing with a super negative friend, or maybe you're like getting ready to do a presentation or take a really big test, or maybe like go to a college interview, um, maybe go on a first date, it, you know, it doesn't always have to be academic, right? But when you're starting to feel those nerves and your anxiety start to kick in and that negative kind of start creeping up a little bit. When you practice meditation on a regular basis, you're actually training your nervous systems for those everyday life situations so that you can kind of pause, you can breathe, you can think through it, and then react. So you can tell yourself like, oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be good in this situation. I know what I'm doing in this situation. I'm, I've got it. Um, so it's actually more beneficial for the everyday life stuff than just in those minutes that you might be actively practicing the meditation. Um, most of these apps, by the way, that are on here are free. Um, they have some in-app purchases, but I always look for the free ones because I know sometimes it's just, it's really expensive to try to do other things and we never want cost to be something that is preventing you from being able to do these practices. Um, I have another really important suggestion too for the people who say they don't have time for meditation. Two things. First of all, the time that we're in right now, wonderful time to get started with a new practice, right? Because we are on a slower pace. We don't have all those places to go. And chances are you might want to get away from some of your family members right now. And that's totally okay and normal as well. So this gives you a really good excuse to kind of close that door, give yourself a little privacy and start a really, really healthy practice. Um, if you're somebody who's still like, my day is still crazy, right? Like for me, I have young kids and I'm working, doing like my own office hours, um, and trying to like do their school with them and all these other things. So I feel like, man, even though we're at a slower pace for sure, my day is full pretty quickly. So what I try to do is do my meditations at night, right? When I'm in bed, I'm trying to go to sleep anyway. It's like built in time, perfect time to start doing meditation as a daily practice. There are really, really good um, sleep meditations as well. All of these different apps give you different themes. So whatever you're feeling in that moment, um, that can help you with it. If you're feeling particularly anxious, if you're having trouble sleeping, if you want to just kind of be more aware and more focused or more present, it can help you. So it really is nice because you can personalize it to whatever your needs are. Um, but meditation truly does help in all aspects. It's the mental health, it's the emotional health, and it has major physical um, impacts as well. Everything from high blood pressure um, to, again, kind of reducing some of like some chronic issues that you may be experiencing as well, reduces the risk of heart attacks and heart disease. It's kind of crazy how much of an impact it can have on all parts of your health. So one thing, instead of doing like a guided meditation with you guys, because that can be a little uncomfortable for people, especially the first time that they're meeting somebody. So um, one thing I just wanted to teach you that can be a really great practice too, that you can do anytime, any place, anywhere. Nobody even knows, has to know that you're doing it. Um, it's called box breathing and it has a similar concept because really all of this comes down to your breath and when you can control your breath you can start to control some of your physical responses too for me when i start to get anxious i get that feeling in my chest right where my chest starts getting tight other people might clench their fists or their jaws or have that like tapping foot and that's when they start feeling those things coming into their body physically box breathing is a great thing when you start feeling those physical symptoms to do this Super, super simple. And again, what I love is that it doesn't require an app and it doesn't require you being in the privacy of your own home. You can do it. And again, nobody has to know. So like if you're somebody who gets test anxiety, um, whether it's an online test or in person, you can do this to calm your, yourself so that your brain can function at its full capability. And it, all it is, is you can do it for three seconds or four, kind of depends on your comfort level. Um, you breathe in for three seconds, hold it for three seconds, 
breathe out for three seconds and hold that for three seconds. So I just want everybody to like do a quick practice round with that because it's so simple. But when you actually count, it kind of feels a little longer than you would naturally necessarily do, especially the hold part. So I'm gonna have you breathe in for one, two, three, hold it for one, two, three, breathe out, one, two, three, and hold it out for one, two, three. And you continue to do that, that's the box cycle. So you keep going. Um, if you feel like three is not enough, you can increase that time. But it is amazing how when you start controlling your breath, how much everything else changes with you as well. So box breathing is an awesome technique, very, very similar benefits to actual guided meditations as well. Next thing I'm gonna have you guys do, if you don't have um, a piece of paper and a pen or pencil, now would be a really good time to just grab something. Um, it's obviously something that you are willing to crumble up. So it, please don't use like a school assignment or something like that to write on. Um, just pick up a piece of paper and if you need to take a quick second to grab one, I'll just pause for just a few seconds to let everybody do that really quickly. So with this activity, um, this is one where a lot of people do feel the benefit immediately because it feels really good to get some of this stuff out of your head and like kind of off of the heaviness of your heart when you do this activity. Um, this is a great one to do in so many different situations too. Right now when there's a lot out of our control, it's really easy again to focus on all of those other things, right? Um, I don't understand the directions that my teacher gave me with my distance learning. I feel like my workload's too much. Um, I can't go see my friends and I don't know when this is going to be over and when can I go back to normal school. All of these things are things we can't control, right? You can't control what a teacher is giving you. You can't control what he or she writes with the directions. So what can you control? And this activity helps you get out all the uncontrollables so that you can start to focus on what you actually can control and what you can actually do. Um, this is also a great one if you're struggling with like a personal relationship. Maybe it's um, a parent or a sibling or a best friend or a girlfriend or a boyfriend. This is a great one to get all those things out rather than saying it and regretting saying something. You can still feel those emotions and get it out and then really process what you actually want to say to the person. So I want you guys to actually do this one. It can be a list. You know, you don't think about grammar, or spelling, anything like that. You just make a list, write down all the things that are just top of mind, top of heart, really stressing you out right now. Maybe it's making you feel overwhelmed or frustrated or flat out angry, maybe sad, because I know that sadness has definitely been um, an emotion that a lot of us have experienced. I'm gonna give you guys some time just to write it all out. And after you finish just kind of making that list of these stressors or things that are making you feel some of the more, as we think of it, kind of traditionally negative emotions. I want you to like literally crumble up the piece of paper. And this is why this activity is particularly helpful when you really write it out, like pen and paper, versus doing it on a device. Um, because the actual act of crumbling up that piece of paper and then you can you know, throw it away, slam it, rip it up, whatever is the most helpful for you, and you actually throw it away, you get rid of it. Like you literally toss away those negative emotions, sometimes that act um, helps you so much. Just get it out of your head and again, off of your heart and like lift that weight off of you that you can then start to clear your head to focus on those more positives. Um, and again, it helps you to get it out and all the things you wish you could tell somebody 
right, that you know you really can't in real life because there'd be consequences to that, it still allows you to feel that. Um, I actually just did this one with my students this week after they found out that they were, you know, can be continuing e-learning through the rest of the year. And it was amazing to see their reactions to that physical act of doing it, rather than just, again, putting it on their iPad or something like that. Um, so this is a great one. This is one that can be done, obviously, on a device. Um, if you ever wish that you could like email somebody back and say all the things you wish you could say to somebody, sometimes like typing out the email you wish you can send. Big tip though, don't actually put the email address in the to part because you don't want to accidentally hit send, which I know has happened to people. Um, but you just write it all out. And sometimes just the act of writing it um, can help so much with your mental health. But I personally am definitely partial to the um, physical because I think crumbling it and like literally getting rid of it, it just feels really good to actually like throw it away. So this is a great practice anytime you are feeling overwhelmed, especially if you just feel like you've got a lot on your plate um, with the uncontrollables. It can be really, really helpful to then focus on, okay, what can I actually do? And it clears your brain to think more clearly. So that's just another strategy. And I know I'm going through a lot here. I just wanted to be able to give you guys a bunch because not everything's going to work for everybody, right? We all have very different personalities and not everything's going to work in every situation. So what I think is super important is kind of figuring out like what works for me and what works for me in this type of experience. So crumbling it up might work great this week for me, but next week when I really need to have more focus, like I'm like, I'm good. I'm not super stressed. I'm not frustrated, but I just need to focus a little bit better. That's when I maybe step up my meditation game, right? And like we do different things in different situations. When I'm in school, I can't just like take off and go exercise and be like, see you guys, I'll be back in a little bit, right? Because that's my stress relievers, exercise. But like, what can I do? I can do some back breathing and that can help me calm down. So you have to kind of start thinking through and kind of have all this, these tools, have your tool chest to be able to know when you use each tool for each situation. So with that, one of the best ways, one of the most proven ways to make you a happier person is expressing gratitude. Um, so it's amazing what it does in your mental health. It can decrease anxiety and depression. It can help you because it helps you really um, shift your attention from all those toxic emotions and thoughts and help you focus on the positives, right? I actually have, I can show you guys, I have my gratitude journal. It was something that, um, uh, a few colleagues, like a few years ago, actually had kind of told me they started doing it. And I'm going to be totally honest. At first, I was kind of like, that's nice. Like, that's, that's nice that you say that that works really well. I'm sure it does wonders, right? And, and didn't really take them super seriously with how big of an impact it would have. And then I was like, okay, I probably shouldn't judge, right? Like, let's try it and see how it works. Um, this is one that's not going to work overnight. So I wanna make that really clear. Like this is a practice, you have to make a habit. So the habit I made for myself was before my first group of students comes in every day, I write in my gratitude journal. And that helped me make it a habit because it was something I did in my routine every single day. I really like doing it at the start of my day because it really helps me shift and then have this like mindset for the whole day. But don't feel like I'm not somebody who journals, so like I don't wanna do that. Like, I'll just like literally even just show you guys. I don't know how well you can see. I literally date and do one, two, three and do a quick phrase. Like, it's not about writing a paragraph. So it, it truly takes a minute of my morning. And it's crazy now that I've done it for a couple of years on a regular basis, how much it helps. It's like, I, I live in Bexley, but I teach in Hilliard. There's plenty of days I get stuck in traffic and I can just concentrate on that, right? Or I have young kids one of which has never been a very good sleeper. So there's plenty of mornings I come in and like, I'm going on two hours of sleep. I could just talk all day about how tired I am. And this has truly helped me shift my mindset. So rather than thinking like, I can't believe I'm so tired. I can't believe my child woke up so many times throughout the night. Instead, I'm like, I am so grateful that I am somebody who can still provide my child so much comfort that just waking up and like telling them they're going to be okay puts them back to sleep, right? And then I have that kind of relationship with my kid. Um, so it really helps me shift my mindset for the rest of the day and getting outside of yourself and kind of thinking about like, what is good? Um, this is a really good time to start this practice as well. Um, this is when I highly encourage you to try like starting today and like put a reminder in your phone for a time of day where you know you are 
free. Like maybe it's when you're eating lunch or breakfast or at the end of the day. Some people like to do it um, kind of at the end so they have that thoughts before they go to sleep. But I really encourage you to do that because we can really miss out on things. I have two questions for you. One yeah. is you had a gratitude app that you listed on the page. Is that something that like comes up and gives you a reminder and asks you to write your gratitude things right then? Is it like a kind of something that keeps you in the practice? It is. Yes. So that's one for somebody who like needs more of that reminder. And like you, you always have your phone with you. So you know, you're going to do it more on your phone. That's why I put that one in there. Cause it really does help make it a practice, right? I'm somebody who like likes to do it for some reason, like pen and paper. So it really depends on what you prefer. I think so many people, especially like this, all the students who are on the call right now, you're used to doing all of your like typing and texting and messaging and everything on your phone. So I would encourage you to find whether it's that app or a different app. Um, I would really encourage you to do it in whatever way you know is going to work best for you. I think that's the most important thing too with all of these practices. Um, I like doing it this way. That doesn't mean it's going to work for everybody that way. So figuring out again, what works for you. And then just to make a connection to your earlier thing is, is the idea of doing a gratitude journal that you sort of like, instead of just looking at all the blue books, the gratitude journal is kind of like the red books. The gratitude journal is like reminding you to keep looking for the positive things so that eventually as you live your life, you're like, oh, I need, oh, that'll be something I could put in my gratitude journal. Or, oh, I could, I, that, would, that would be something I could be grateful for. It kind of makes you pay attention and look for the positive things that you could later include. Yes, absolutely. That's exactly it. So like the more you start scanning for the positives of like, what could I write about? Or, you know, what can I focus on? The more that's what you start looking at. So going back again, yeah, exactly like you said. And when I was talking about like your brain, that's just making that groove in your brain that much deeper and that much deeper and that much deeper. When you do things like this, um, it helps you be able to not only scan for it, but that's some, once you really make it a practice, that's then the first thing you see, right? So like, rather than being like, you're not even seeing the like, I can't believe I got stuck in traffic. Your brain immediately is going to, um, I'm so glad I'm safe. I wonder what I should do for that person, right? Because you've like switched your brain so much to think in a different direction that it, it like literally changes again, the way your brain is wired. So it helps you scan for all those things. One thing I like to do with my students too is I call it pop quiz, where I literally will just be like, okay, pop quiz. Um, tell me one good thing that's happened to you today. And I, they never know who I'm going to pick on because it's not everybody. And then that helps them be ready, right? Like when I say pop quiz, they all get ready and think, what was good that happened today? So they're like ready to be called on. And by just even doing those small acts, it helps you then start being like, okay, I know I might get called on today. So what can I look for that's good? So I know what I'm going to say, right? Because even those small little tricks of our brain, then they're ready. And that's what they're actually looking for. And again, yeah, exactly like you said, rather than just seeing the blue and just looking for the blue, they're now able to focus on those other colors. Absolutely. Um, so I'll pause for a second, because this is a great time. You can start your gratitude practice right now. Literally just do one, two, three, and then don't even worry about full sentences. Just one, two, three, what are three things in this moment, in this day that you can be grateful for? And what one thing I think is super important is it doesn't have to be life alteringly big, right? It might be really, really small. Maybe somebody brought you a coffee today. I mean, that's not life changing, right? But it makes an impact and you're really grateful for that. So don't overthink it because a lot of people do when they're first getting started. It can be really small, but it can be something as long as you're grateful for it, it counts, right? Okay. My dog's joining in the gratitudes. And as you're doing this, also just a reminder, if you want to ask a question, I mean, you know, and you feel like it's hard to jump in verbally, you can always type a question in the chat bar and uh, we'll get that to Kristen as well. And I'll, I'll just do a couple more things and then I'll give some time to for questions before I know people have to hop off. All right, so one of the last kind of, like, kind of two things I just wanna share with you guys. Um, I would be, if, if we weren't in the situation we were right now, I would be like having a very different conversation about time and like, where does our time go? How do we use our time? But I think it's really important that obviously we adjust to what's happening in our lives. So like we all know, we can't like rush off to practices and we can't rush off 
to, you know, all the after school things we typically would. Obviously, we're not even rushing out to school, right? Some people's hours are incredibly different for school right now because you're just waking up and, and doing it. Um, so this is my challenge for you guys during this time is to find your flow. And I want to clarify what that means. Flow is the thing that you do that you like lose track of time. You get so like into what you are doing, you don't even realize an hour just went by. And what's really important to remember, there is a difference between like, oh, I really like it and actually finding flow. And that big difference is flow means it brings you both meaning and pleasure, right? And then the other side of it is it's challenging, but not frustrating. So it's not something like if you get bored doing it, you're not in flow because it's not challenging enough. But if you're sitting there being like, this is stressing me out. I am so frustrated right now. You're also not in flow because it's not something that's bringing you enough pleasure. So you have to find this balance of all of these things. And it can be challenging, right? Like sometimes you have to try a bunch of things before you find your flow. But this is a wonderful time to do that because the more you find your flow and the more you figure out what those things are, the more you can incorporate that into not just your everyday life, like during this stretch, but you can then incorporate that into what after school activities are you doing, right? Like maybe what you're doing now, you realize like, I don't really miss that practice very much. Like, do I really like to do that just because I've been doing it for a really long time? Like once you recognize this stuff, it really helps you incorporating it into all aspects of your life. Um, typically when you like find this meaning and pleasure and the challenge, but it's not frustrating, those are those moments that you wanna spend doing the extra things, right? Like, yeah, it's awesome to take the brain breaks and play video games or like watch a few things on Netflix, but, we also want to be able to find those things that actually give us meaning too. And when you can do that and you can find those things, maybe it's painting, maybe it's writing, maybe it's reading for a book that has nothing to do with school because you have not had time to read a book for pleasure in a really long time, right? Like I tend to find my flow and I didn't even realize it because I never considered myself to be a super strong reader. Like it was never my thing really until like recently. And I realized like, if I actually read for myself, not for work or not for a book club or a book study, but something truly that I'm choosing, I like can completely lose track of time. And I love that feeling and something I didn't even realize until again, like truly like this year that I realized that that's one of my ways I find flow. So this is a really good time, especially if you're sitting around being like, I'm really bored. <laughs> I'm going to challenge you, change that and find some different activities that you can do defines that flow um, because that will completely change how you're thinking about time during this stretch when we're home so much. So that's just one of my challenges to you guys as we're kind of wrapping up. The very last thing, and this has a major impact on happiness as well, is acts of kindness. And this is another one similar to gratitude where there's no act too small, okay? So you don't have to do anything that involves money. You don't have to do anything that's going to change the whole world that goes viral, right? Small acts can make a huge, huge impact. And the reason that this makes such a big impact, not just to better other people, right? But to better yourself um, is that you get outside of yourself. And when we get outside of ourselves, it also helps us reset our, our reference point. And by that, I mean like right now, your reference point is you're comparing what it's like to be at home doing distance learning to what it was like to be at school a couple months ago. And you're probably missing your friends and the socialization of school and you're missing the face-to-face -face interaction with your teachers and all of that. And that's very much inside of yourself. And it's, it's okay. It's totally normal. I don't want you to think it's not okay to think those things, but that's your reference point. You need to reset that. Because if you just stay comparing to what it was, you're just gonna stay really sad. And it's gonna make you really miss those things more and more and more and more and it's gonna bog you down. So resetting your reference point, doing something for another person, getting outside of your own brain can help you do just that, reset, right? And it really helps with loneliness too. So in this time when I know you guys are missing each other and you're missing your friends and your teachers and other family members, I can't you know, give my parents a hug and that hurts my heart, you know? Like it's really hard, so I get it. 
it can really help with that as well. And again, I don't want you to overthink this. It can be big, right? Like if you want to take on this awesome project and like do something really cool for like the grocery store workers over at Market District, or you want to do something really cool for the doctors and nurses and all the staff at Children's Hospital or, you know, the bigger community things, I can like applaud you doing that. But don't think that like, don't let that hold you back from doing anything, right? I mean, I know if you guys have been taking walks around the neighborhood, the sidewalk talk, drawings that kids have been doing that's an act of kindness sending those positive messages out to the community and it's not doesn't you know cost things it's not donating millions of dollars right it's all these small things maybe you make a bunch of signs and then go hang them in your best friend's yard so that tomorrow when they wake up they have these awesome positive messages that they're looking at out their window and like totally surprising them by that writing thank you notes maybe just stepping up a little bit at home and being like mom dad you know, grandma, grandpa, whoever you live with, um, thank you. Like, I'm going to do the dishes tonight. That is an act of kindness. That is getting outside of yourself. And it can have such a huge impact because one, you get to see the reaction of the impact you're making on somebody else's life. And in turn, that makes you feel that much better too. So you're not just resetting your reference point, but that, that combo of a selfless act then selfishly becoming really good for you does wonders for your overall happiness. And again, that kind of loneliness factor that I think a lot of us are feeling right now. Um, so don't ever think, think it though. Again, small acts. I always tell one day, like I was particularly tired. One of my coworkers knew it. He literally just came down, put a Diet Coke like in front of me, like in the middle of my class and walked away, didn't say anything. I mean, it was, you know, a, a Diet Coke, like not, not gonna change the world, right? But that small act of kindness, like, obviously had an impact because it's something I use as an example, right? Like he, he thought about my situation, he showed true empathy and did something about it. And that's something that can have a bigger impact than I think most people realize on their own personal happiness. So I'm gonna stop sharing here so I can like see all of your faces and have time to answer questions and I can see there's some things going on in the chat and everything else. So. Um, I love that you guys are writing about like what you already know about your flow. I think that's really, really cool. So, so I'll pause. I'm kind of reading too, but I'll let you guys ask questions. So I, I would encourage you, if, if you have a question, this is a great time to ask it. Um, I know we'll start with one question that showed up in the chat. And if you want to type a question in the chat, you can, or if you want to ask it verbally, you can. But um, Pam asked earlier about gratitude journals, mm -hmm. about um, do you feel like you need to write something new every time or is it okay to return to the same things? Are you looking for specific things so that you're like looking more intentionally for details? Can you say anything more about that? Yeah, that's a really good question. I think um, generally speaking, I think as specific as you can be in that moment on that day, um, it's going to benefit you more. It also gets you out of that feeling of being like, well, I said I was grateful for my kids I, I don't know what else to say today, right? So the more specific you can be, I think like sometimes too, like when there are big world things going on, maybe you want to start bigger, but then like bring it, bring it down to like a more like what's happening in my home for me right now uh, moment too. But I do think generally speaking, the more specific you can be, the more benefit you're going to get out of it every single day. Cause that's going to be where it starts shifting that mindset immediately, right? Like the traffic jam, instead of concentrating on like, I can't believe I was late for work. being like, I'm really glad I got here today safely. Like that shifts it immediately, right? Because you feel it more in that moment. So that's where I think you're going to see more of that immediate build up of of the benefit from it i'm going to leave like a five second gap here in case anybody wants to ask a question if not i'll ask one but if, if somebody has one this is a time to jump in i don't have a question but i do have a quick comment um i can i can attest to the gratitude journal with my own son when he was in middle school um he for whatever reason think he was just really really angry and as a parent, I didn't know how to deal with that. So um, I mandated uh, a gratitude journal. I'm like, you're going to like it, whether you, <laughs> you're going to try this, whether you like it or not. And it was interesting. I had him do it for 30 days. And the shift that he actually made was amazing. And we went back through and reflected what he put in that gratitude journal. In the beginning, it was like, oh, I love my Legos. I, you know, like my room or whatever. And then it got to be more conceptual, um, more like, uh, I'm, I'm grateful for, you know, uh, 
having a wonderful family or, you know, it, more in depth. But that gratitude journal, I was just really um, amazed at the, at the power behind it. Yeah, I love that. I, I love, first of all, that you enforce that because I think sometimes it has to be kind of like pushed a little bit, but I, I love because it's such a healthy way to handle that too. And like to see that shift, uh, again, I was, I really was personally, you know, blown away with the impact it had on my mindset as well. And it made me like not just be a better teacher, but it made me be like a better mom and it made me be a better wife and like all the different roles that I feel, you know, I'm in every day. It made me better in all of those because I was able to step back and instead of focusing on the, like the little nitpicky things that might have really brought me down before, I was able to like see bigger picture and focus on that stuff instead, which made a huge impact on all all parts of me. Give another gap for questions or comments if you want to jump in. Okay, oh, okay. Oh, go ahead, Alison. Sorry, um, I wanted to think about meditation because that's something that I've been trying <laughs> and had a really hard time, you know, finding the time and the um, wherewithal to just sit down and do it. But then I did some reading on it and it kind of said that even a minute mm -hmm. is good. And I think as soon as I read that, I thought, you know, I can, everyone can find a minute in their day. And, you know, before I was kind of looking and thinking, well, that's a failure, but then no, it isn't because it's a minute game. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's something helpful to kind of get people started. Yeah, I absolutely. I love that you said that. There's, um, Steve and I were talking about a really great podcast called The Happiness Lab that the professor from Yale does. And she had a special um, show recently where it was talking about meditation. And she, they talked about just that, that concept of like one minute, like think about what are you doing in your day that you know you're going to do anyway. Maybe it's cooking. Maybe you're the person that cooks in your house or doing the dishes or um, taking a shower. You know, it's those things that you know you're doing anyway. Use that time to be really mindful and like just concentrate maybe on your breath or like repeat some kind of call me mantra for yourself in that moment and use that time that you know it's something you're doing anyway, right? And switch your, just switch what you're doing in that time with your mind, not what you're physically doing. And that makes a huge difference for people. Um, I know, again, like I mentioned for me, it was like finding that, that nighttime routine of falling asleep because it was something I'm doing anyway, right? And if I fell asleep in the middle of it, great, awesome, it worked, I was asleep, right? And if not, it was something I was trying to do anyway. Um, a great suggestion that I heard, you know, they say like, sing happy birthday as you're washing your hands. Instead of singing that, which could make everybody go crazy at the amount of times they've been washing their hands recently, instead use that time to be really mindful of like, like, what does it feel like? Like, what does that physical hand to hand touch feel like? And like, think about that and just think about like, just what you're doing and being present in that moment. That is meditation, right? So just because you're not pulling up an app doesn't mean it's not meditation. So um, it's really just a mindful practice. So those things in your everyday life that you're doing anyway, that's a great place to start. Again, even one minute, it, it really helps start that shift. Let's take another comment or question gap. Chris and I'll jump in, in into the after we had a nice moment of breath there. That was good. Um, the the phone, the cell phone, and I know that like on one hand, it seems to me like one of the ways that we can create mindfulness or meditation or separation is to like put our cell phone in one room and go into another room for a couple minutes to just like have the because you know it's constantly buzzing and making distractions. So. But then I also think it's interesting that there are apps we can use so that we can use our phone so that the phone could be our friend in seeking happiness instead of the thing that's constantly causing us to like get pissed off at something on Twitter or like get angry about something somebody, you know, whatever, or feel jealous of somebody on Instagram or something else like that. Yeah, I love that you brought that up. And that's kind of something that it's so interesting because that time concept when I said like I had such a different conversation, like my students pre all of COVID stuff, I had a very different conversation about phone, social media, and everything else, and like how we use that. 
Um, I th think one thing like technology is not going away. And if anything, the recent situation has made us realize a lot of the good with technology, right? Like we've been able to communicate, we can do something like this. I've been able to use Zoom to connect with family members that I can't go see. Um, it's not going away. And, and if we focus more on all those good things that technology can do for us, rather than again, the things that it can bring us down with, um, I just encourage you to use your technology that way. I will say social media, um, we could do a whole nother session on just social media um, and happiness, but um, be really careful with that. And this is a time where it can be really um, tough because you're going to be wanting to use social media, connect with friends, which I think is healthy and good, right? Because like you can FaceTime, you can message, you can chat, you can do these different things which connect you, which is so important for your happiness. But this just scrolling, the mindless scrolling through social media, don't let that be how you're using your time. Because that's going to be where you do start using all of those social comparisons. And the research actually shows that social media actually, no matter what you're looking at, even if you feel like it's something that should make you feel better, it actually makes you feel worse. Like there's no situation really where it's really going to make you feel better when you're just doing that mindless scroll. And that's what I mean by just like, just looking and seeing all the stories and just seeing all of it without like purposefully using it. Like I'm going to, um, do a group FaceTime and we're going to connect. That's good, right? That's like communication and social connection in a good way. Um, but I really, really challenge you guys not to just be on your phone scrolling. Um, that's going to catch you in a really um, tough place and you're not going to feel good when you get off of your phone either. So use it for the good stuff. Um, I'm not an anti-technology person because I think there is so much good that we can use it for. Um, we just have to be really mindful of how we're using it. So I want to actually give you a one small assignment, everybody on this call, which is um, if you could just take one moment of gratitude and type something into the chat bar that you are appreciative of, of Kristen, that she said today, that she did something that she made that one action that you want to take. Um, maybe it has to do with meditation or breathing or mindfulness or, uh, you know, or flow or some of the things that get you into flow or acts of kindness. But if everyone who's on the call would just take like one minute to just, a quick thing in the chat bar, something you're appreciative of or something that you got out of today's call, something you're going to do, something that has made you think about or reconsider. Um, take a moment to do that right now. And then I have one more thing I'm going to ask of you after this. So one minute now, and but don't go anywhere because I have one more thing I'm going to ask of you. I'm just, just going to make a wild guess that reading all of your things made Kristen feel happier. Yes, absolutely. Just, just if I can read that smile. Um, so yeah. th thank you all for, first of all, I want to thank Kristen for um, for sharing her time with us. I mean, it's really, it's weird that we have this thing we can't even like all, but we can't hear applause, we can't see the smiles. Um, but what I would love if everyone would do, um, Ms. Hutchison has requested, if everyone would just turn on their camera for a second, she just wants to take a picture of this gathering for the yearbook. And so um, if you don't mind, if you're, if you're not too shy, uh, just go ahead and, and go down to the bottom um, and turn your video on. Um, and then uh, we'll have a picture of a bunch of us together and we can, thank you, look at us, look at us. We look good. It's funny, I didn't even know who was out there. Now I see you all. Now Kristen knows who she was talking to. I love that dog in the back. I know. <laughs> is that a boxer, Wyatt? Bulldog, what is that? French Bulldog. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. All right, I think we got most of us here. A couple don't have a camera. Sonia, you need us to smile? All right, everybody, you ready? One, two, three, smile. Got it. Um,
Kristen, once again, thank you so much. Um, it was really a pleasure to have you uh, lead this conversation with us. To all the folks who are on the call, I hope you take advantage of some of the apps and some of the strategies. Um, sometimes it's these small things, it's developing the new grooves that can really lead us to new ways of thinking and that can make us calm and happy. And um, it is possible. So get on the apps, you know, listen to the Happiness Lab podcast. Um, and Kristen, thank you very much for, for making the time today. Thank you so much for having me, you guys. Have a wonderful day. You got applause for there. <laughs> I know, I love that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.